Steve. You spent some time today talking about data integrity models and protecting data, and that's where security folks should focus their efforts. When I hear data integrity, I think about encryption right away. Um, is that a common, is that, is that an, uh, maybe not the right first step to take when you're, when you're thinking about data integrity? It's not all about encryption. No, you're correct. I mean, that's definitely the right first step, but different focus. When you start thinking about a data integrity, you, you want to think about the full model and really focus on how do I protect the data? Encryption may be one method, but it's not the best method for a lot of the things that you're going to look at too. You got to look at expanded power and go, what am I doing for my business process to protect that data in line with encryption? Right. So you're in an industry where data is moving at incomprehensible speeds. Um, can you just explain some of the challenges you know, that, that you run into day to day? Oh yeah, some of the biggest challenges that I run in day to day is really how do those third party processes and, and relationships wind up working? Mm -hmm. So I might sit up there and actually want to encrypt my data, but my third party partner that I depend on doesn't want to. Right. So being, bringing those things together and figuring out a commonality is one of the biggest problems. That, and then you, you hit it, the nail on the head, the velocity of that data. Mm -hmm. You know, at s nanosecond speeds to be able to incur businesses and make revenue, you got to sit up there. Anything that puts in that way that stops it really becomes problematic. So I got to think innovative quickly right. in order to be able to keep those business processes running, but also secure them at the same time. Yeah. So you make an interesting point, too. I mean, it's important, obviously, to concentrate on data and protecting it and putting controls around it. But... That whole paradigm changes once somebody touches data, doesn't it? Yes, and that's the whole thing. It, it, the whole model breaks once that person touches data because I can put a lot of encryption on that data, but the minute I have to decrypt it and hand it to a third party, mm -hmm. all those security mechanisms are gone. So we have to figure out a way to work with a third party or anybody else that's gonna touch the data and render that data inert if something happens, like I gave it to the wrong person. And that's where the data integrity model helps because I have programs that go, is this transaction secure? If it's not, the data gets rendered inert and it's just not it's useless. Right. So building those into your process will make it a more safer and secure posture. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to move to. So there are some uh, standards that exist, obviously, that help you model things out. Um, are those standards, do they take into account some of these kind of, uh, you know, odd moments, as you just mentioned, where you have to hand data off to somebody else and maybe they're not in line with your security policies? Yeah, some of those standards think they do today, and I think they did back in the day when they were created, but they need to evolve. A lot of our transactional businesses that we did back in the 80s and 90s aren't the same speed that we do today. So they just need to evolve. Yeah. I think they have the right basis, but then more research has to go into them now. We've kind of shifted into focusing on attackers and perimeter deface and moved away from data. Now we need to shift back to move into data, mm -hmm. shore that back up, and then I think we'll leap for it farther. Yeah. Do you buy it that data is the perimeter? I mean, is the perimeter just completely obliterated at this point? I, my own personal, yes. I think the perimeter is kind of is obliterated because if you think of the way businesses have to work, a lot of the stuff is really data intensive. How do you protect that when you sit up there and build these layered defenses that you have to open when mm -hmm. the business people want to do work right. or anything else? So I think the perimeter is gone. Mm -hmm. But I, like I said, I think if we start focusing on the data, we'll build that second layer and make it more costly for attackers. Right. And then it doesn't matter whether you have perimeter defenses or not. My data will be my defense mm -hmm. in the future. How do the challenges with internal business owners compare to the third parties, as you mentioned? Ooh. So I think internal business owners may be a little easier because inside the house we can build models, we can show them. With third parties, I think the biggest challenge is really understanding the so what. Why should I right. do this? You know, how does this help my bottom line? And one of the things I show them is like, you don't want to be part of a big news story. You know, and not even that, the value that we create now between our relationships, you can use other places and mm -hmm. show them why they should secure their data right. in the same way that this partner is doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to show value. It's an ecosystem. How much of your day or your week or your month is spent on advocacy and, and explaining, you know, kind of threats to business owners and, you know, the, the, the gotchas and what can happen? So funny enough, you would believe I'm, I got an engineering degree. I probably use about 10% of my engineering degree and maybe 90% of my negotiation education skills. So yeah. I would say it's about 90% education because yeah. what we're trying to do is instill a base and a framework that will be continued all through the time when it surpasses me. And that, mm -hmm. it takes education yeah. and being able to talk in their language. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's about education. That's really important, too, is a... I don't want to say bringing it down to their level, but I mean, you know, talking security so that it makes sense and not talking in techno babble. No, absolutely. Hey, I talked to some of the smartest <clears throat> business guys. That isn't where they're focused on. They're not supposed to be techno geeks. It's my job to sit up there and match it to their language and make sure that they understand it. And once they get it, they take it actually even further than where I want to take it. Mm -hmm. 
with all the um, discussions about encryption and people trying to put more controls on it at a, you know, at a, a big macro level, um, what are the challenges going to be like for guys like you in the next two, five, ten years? I think the biggest challenge is really kind of honing the encryption debate and making sure that it stays in a reasonable place. Because if you encrypt everything, even the defenders, I can't see into what's going on. The attackers will start using encryption right. where we can't see that, and we won't be able to understand what's going on in the network. That's going to be our biggest challenge. So keeping that debate within the right realms and then figuring out, okay, what business processes can we put in place so we can see into the data in the most secure way and then to send the data on once we know it's secure. Right. Great. Thank you. Thanks right. for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.